Hi to folks, Kiwi here, and welcome back to Lucy, the eternity she wished for. Safe Space, which would be awesome, where we're eventually going to fall in love with a robot, and it's going to be real adorable, and we're going to love every second of it. But, that will have to be for this one. So thank you. No. <laughs> um, I tail it towards my high school. I'm in second year. While running, a movie I saw recently springs to mind. Wally. An old sci-fi flick uh, set in the year 2050. All these oldies seem to be lacking in one thing. Creativity. If you showcase large-scale space battles, others would have flying vehicles soaring through the sky. Well, guess what? It's 2050. We don't have moon-sized starship. You sound like one of those assholes just like, where's my hoverboard a couple years ago? <laughs> we don't have moon-sized starships or flying cars zipping around. People still walk to school. People still drive normal vehicles. People still ride bicycles and skateboards. Some people still use old fountain pens and pocket watches like me. But there exists a single piece of technology that's become more prominent in our lives. Androids. And also VR, and also magnetism, and monorails, and a lot of shit. It's not just gonna be one piece of tech in the next 30 years. They're being used everywhere around the world. That's one uh, thing these H films got right. Like, I assume FaceTime is going to become a huge thing. Ah, the school bell. I recognize it because I don't know why, but uh, one of my old apartment neighbors used to have that as, like, an alarm for 6 p.m. I don't I don't know why. That's just... Uh, I recognize that. The morning bell snaps me from my reverie. And also, I've seen it in anime, so I recognize that it's for that. And I dash straight to my classroom. Please refrain from running in the hallways. A janitor android scolds me as I push past. This type of facial recognition software to report any transgressor, like me. Except they simply cover my face. And there's no record. You gotta know how to exploit the system. <laughs> Alright, uh, safe! SAFE! I scream inside my head. Bolstered by my recent victory, I strut toward my desk with a confident swagger. There's no one here. And, okay, well, the time seems about accurate, but there's no one here. Notice that the teacher's not in yet. No one's in yet. <laughs> Put down in my seat while still huffing. That was pretty close. Did you sleep in again? That concern-filled voice. It's coming from the guy sitting next to me. Oh, hey. Clever-looking fellow. People usually refer to him by his nickname. Dr. Gears. The fuck kind of nickname is that? Because he's a real geek with a burning passion for robots. I, on the other hand, despise robots. And, uh, and while I'd label myself an introvert, he's very approachable and outgoing. You can be an introvert and be approachable. That's not how that works. Whatever. Moreover, our... I'm not gonna get into it. Moreover, our tastes and hobbies differ quite a lot. You'd think uh, we'd have nothing to do with each other. But as they say, opposites attract. I know, weird, right? No, I just have some business to take care of. Really? This morning? In the, uh, this early in the morning? Mmm, it's a long story. I'm cut short. By a middle-aged man walk, making his entry. Walking in his entry. Our teacher. A female assistant android trails behind. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this later. I send him a signal. He returns a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, teacher time. Or we're skipping class. Um, well, not skipping class, but we're, we're, we're skipping over class. Lunch time rolls by. Oh, we're skipping over like a couple classes then. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how the, uh, the class structure is in Japan slash Korea. Um, what I know is that when I was in high school, there was two classes, then lunch, then two more classes, then you go home. That was that was my high school, though. That's uh, that's just Ontario system. Oh, that could just be my high school. I've I've heard that there's differences even in my city. I take out my freshly bought pieces of bread. Doctor Gears does likewise, and with a very appealing lunchbox. It looks like it's clockwork, like actual like gear clock whatever you you know what I mean. Two desks have been joined together. On mine, there are a couple pieces of fried cr uh, croquet. Cro Cro crocheting with a car carton of chocolate milk with a carbon 
My friend, on the other hand, has quite a tasty spread on his, uh, which he seems to be enjoying immensely. I've heard that his maid android makes it for him every morning. Because, you know, that. And the food doesn't look half bad. Hmm. Then again, anything's better to a poor schmuck like me who eats bread every day. Yeah, that's gotta be bad for, like, your carb intake. My god, you must be overweight. I said, speaking from experience. Problem with your food, or...? Never mind. Problem indeed. I bite down on the croquet. Crockett. What the f <laughs> Drugs! Delicately uh, piercing its golden crust warm surface, a savory scent wafts forth. The sweet flavor of the dough mingles with the tantalizing aroma, creating a heavenly mixture. But that's not all. The creme inside unleashes its softness as it slowly melts upon my tongue. For the vegetables in the mixture provide a strong, rich flavor. What the fuck happened? <laughs> the eggs and mashed potatoes join the fray by pleasantly blending in with the other ingredients. <laughs> this, this refined taste. It must be... The fuck happened? The fuck happened? I had to go in there, didn't I? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Are you talking to me, the player? What is happening? Putting aside the side excuse for a rubber substitute, I pose a question to Dr. Gears. By the way, didn't you once tell me that you have a lot of androids at home? Huh? Yeah, around six, I think. That's a high number. A typical household. What the fuck? Why did that suddenly happen? Why did he go on cooking drugs? Typical household can't afford that many. Rumor is that Gears is from a well-to-do family. I'd say based on his outfit, but I mean, that's probably the school uniform. Why the sudden interest? Uh, it, it's nothing. Oh, wait a minute. He starts grinning like an idiot. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty dumb grin. Hey, your fruit's falling into your mouth, you know. It's not. You've taken a liking to androids, haven't you? So you're calling off the little war of ours? Or like a temporary truce. Bruce? Good enough. Androids are simply amazing, you know. They're truly the greatest invention that science has delivered since the beginning of mankind. Let's excuse, you know, antibiotics. There are quite a few there are quite a few types. My favorite's the maid model. Because I'm a fucking weirdo. <laughs> they take care of all the chores and really know how to cook. Oh, okay, like actually being a maid and caretaker and not just visually. Gotcha. On top of that, the female ones are all pretty cute. There it is. Sometimes I find myself admiring their beauty. You've got one si sick, twisted mind, Gears. Tis, tis. Don't you know that people can achieve inner peace with beauty? They can do it with many other things. It's been proven by science, you know. Fucking idiot. I shake my head wearily. Just because you're beautiful doesn't mean you're fucking at peace with life. I do admire his enthusiasm over something so petty, though, really. Look, it's what's on the inside that counts. Both are true. What are you getting at? Appearance doesn't matter. It's just it's still a crummy, stupid robot. That's not where I was going with that. Also, the time hasn't ticked forward. It's been this minute for a long time. Here's an example using Pete. Let's say there's a person with a pretty face, but he's a man. O okay. Does the fact that he's got a woman's face change anything? Why can't a man ha just have a pretty face? Why does it have to be a woman's face? Pretty does not mean female. No, he's ultimately a man. Likewise, even if we see a beautiful android, since it's ultimately a robot, its aesthetics don't matter anymore. Eh, I agree and disagree with this whole point. It just becomes an illusion. What I'm trying to say is that even if a robot acts like a person, it's not. Therefore, all robots are the same to me. I just like them all. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jumps to every conclusion. This to one toaster once bit me, so now I hate all technology forever. 
I guess you still haven't changed your mind. But there has to be a reason why you brought it up, right? Uh, sheer curiosity, perhaps? Normally, you wouldn't even talk about it. Well, yeah, I'm sort of a three-dimensional human and not just a caricature in a video game. If you're looking to buy one, I'm here for you, man. I'll make sure to fill you in on everything you need to know. I'm telling you, you'll be making you'll be making the greatest purchase of your life. In response, I rub my cheeks in embarrassment. Aw, jeez. <laughs> Best purchase ever. I don't know. Um, I'm not exactly looking to buy one. Could it be that you're worried about the price, my friend? Um, probably. Don't worry. I have some connections that'll let you have one dirt cheap. As long as I'm with you, there won't be any problems. Uh, see, I thought you were just gonna give me money. I'll be like, yeah, I'll take that. No, it's not that. Uh, there's no need to buy one. No, just what do you mean by that? Fidgeting awkwardly, I wonder if I should tell everything. Okay, are you gonna tell him everything or just tell it in general? I found one somewhere. Found what? An android. You found an android? Yeah. Where? At the junkyard. Holy, you lucky bastard. Is it something like a an IDX 358? That's like asking somebody, that's like asking an Amish person what car they own. Or 455. Like, my friends talk to me about what fucking... Like, motherboard and stuff is in my computer. I don't know the numbers. It's a good one, I think. What model is it? It's something that starts with P. I can't remember. It's like PIM, but I don't remember the number. It's an arbitrary number. That means nothing to me. Someone told me it's a pretty rare, recent model, but I haven't seen anything impressive yet. Might as well give it some time, though. It, it was free, after all. Hmm. Now you've made me curious. And I hate being curious. I mean, take it back. Take this conversation away. <laughs> I'll be sure to pay you a visit soon. He pauses for a moment before continuing, as if he's trying to change the subject. Well, I'm certainly happy that you've taken an interest in androids, but... But what? But you should be careful. About what? What the fuck are you talking about? You've seen them on TV, right? People who are obsessed with androids. Oh, are you accusing me of that? They say it gets real, t really tough to deal with as time goes on. Robots are robots. Humans are humans. You should never forget this boundary between them. I love how you're just accusing me. It's just like, oh yeah, don't do that. Even though, as far as you, as long as you've known me, apparently I've hated robots with a passion. As soon as I look at one, you're like, don't fuck it. Like, <laughs> have some consistency about your opinion of your friends, asshole. Robots are mere tools designed to make our lives easier. Nothing more, nothing less. Me being stuck with, uh, me being struck by lightning is more likely. Fall in love with a robot? That's just crazy. I know, I know, of course. Uh, I don't expect that to happen to you, of all people. Good, you fucking idiot. But you know, better safe than sorry. Better safe than- wait, what? Hang on, um... Okay, I guess. He's just repeating it. Like a weirdo. What? Who repeats their fucking selves? Alright, alrighty. I'll keep it in mind. My fucking god. He you knows in response. There we go. And over. Yeah. I wish there was more juice in the glass beside me. I'm thirsty. Before I knew it, the day's class finally came. What? At last, another monotonous day of school was coming to a close. But it feels like this lecture's lasting all eternity. I've been here for years. Please send help. I'm worried about my family. <laughs> it's like I'm stuck in molasses. The chalkboard is filled with scribbles that are barely decipherable. Sure. Making it very hard to understand the lesson, which is painful enough already. Uh, I loudly yell, I can't take it anymore! The teacher is also awful at explaining things. He's Kiwi. His words go through one ear and out the other. It goes through the ear and then out the other. Not into the ear, but through it. Unable to hold back the incoming fatigue, I let out a small yawn. I'm glancing around, it looks like no one's doing much better. 
All these medi uh, uh, mediocre teachers have one thing in common. Their teaching method. It's fucking boring. It's way too convoluted. A bunch of rotten snobs. That's what they are. Uh, excuse me. Dude, you're a teenager. You don't actually know shit. You're getting there, but you don't know shit for dick. And yet, time marches on. The teacher's dreadful onslaught of words ultimately comes to an end. Watching a politician's speech is more riveting in comparison. I mean, if you think so, sure. And that's, and that's left now, is to go home. Time to get out of this place. Pack my belongings hurriedly. Hurriedly. Uh, waving goodbye to Dr. Gears as I start to head home. I wonder what my nickname is. Analog, I guess? Though that could easily be insulted. I'm in the downtown street, that way that I hate. On the way, I suddenly realized something. I nearly forgotten about the android. I almost ended up heading straight home. I double back towards the repair shop. <laughs> if it were me, I absolutely would have gotten home and then be like, wait, shit. It would have been a couple hours later, maybe. Or I would have got home and realized it wasn't there and be like, oh. Oh, fuck, that's right. All right, and then I'd go. Arriving, I peek through the windows. The place is not too busy. No sign of the repairman. Wasting no more time, I head in. I gotta remember this guy's voice. It's Western Russia. There we go. Antique shop, Welcome to the antique shop. As soon as I set my foot inside, I was immediately greeted by a female staff. Fucking hate my middle finger. The voice had a sweet, vibrant texture. It really caught me off guard. I never expected a girl to be manning the store. Whoa! Whoa! Wrong decade! <laughs> Wrong set of the 50s! <laughs> I guess she's a part-timer. Like, what the fuck? Women are allowed to work part-time! The fuck? <laughs> Turn around the face of a person calling out to me. And my jaw drops to the floor. Boom! <laughs> I gotta pick it up. I'm not allowed to p let people know I'm a robot. You. Her face lights up when she finally recognizes me. It's Lucy. Still wearing that weird outfit. <sighs> Face! <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Master is finally... Oh, God. Please don't call me that. This has been waiting all day long. It was the android named Lucy Valentine who greeted me at the door. Am my eyes playing tricks on me? There's no way that useless thing could be standing there talking to me. It's almost as if it was repaired at a repair shop. Like a fucking idiot. <laughs> so that smile. I double check. You're... Lucy, right? Hi. Yes. Lucy. None other than Lucy Valentine. Lucy. Well, I guess that settles it. How'd you... How'd you end up here? Hi, Fuck it, I hate it so much. It has sexual connotations, and I don't want that right now in my do adorable love game with robots. And especially since she's wearing, like, midriff and no pants. Put on some fucking clothes, then call me that. Actually, don't. But the first part. What about Lucy, Master? That voice. And, that, and your face. Ugh. And you're standing on your own, right? Hi. Yes, of course. I'm just gonna not say that. Lucy is standing on her two, on two feet. Ahem. What? Lucy puffs up her chest, looking proud. I mean, that's not really something to be proud of, but... Well, have you ever been near a child, okay? They're proud when they do fucking anything. My nephew was proud that he knocked a block over, and then he did it again to show me. He, he's like five. Thinking back on how uh, she was before, it was damn well impressive. You do look better now, so there's nothing wrong with you anymore? Yes, Lucy feels like she could soar through the skies. For emphasis, she spins in place like an excited ballerina. She had the appearance of a mature, well-pampered maiden, yet at the same time looked silly like a child. I'm gonna turn down this fucking music. Um, BGM? Oh, background music, okay. Uh, a little... You know what, that's better. There we go. Ah, smack! <laughs> but her spin abruptly ends as she crashes onto the floor, smacking me in the face. 
And there goes my peace of mind. <laughs> Still not back to normal, it seems. Lucy smiles sheepishly. Well, I'm at a loss for words. That deceptively human voice. Her vibrant personality, full of such emotion. Her face displaying all manner of expressions. It's almost as if she's fucking real now. Every Each movement bursts with a spirited passion. To say that I'm amazed would be a gross understatement. My brain's turned to mush. But that'll have to be it for this one. So thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, have Kiwi. You've been great, too. And you have yourself a delightful day. Goodbye.